In this video, I'm taking a look back into the history books. We are surrounded by a rich selection of weaponry in Battlefield games. However, the details of where these weapons were used, or whether or not any of them still exist, is often overlooked. Sometimes a weapon will be included, even if it wasn't used extensively during the war. The best example of this is the Hell Regal in Battlefield 1. That weapon was purely a prototype, however became arguably the most popular choice for the assault class in Battlefield 1. I've chosen a few weapons that I personally enjoy using, but also ones that include interesting backstories. I'll give you a brief background of the weapon in question, accompanied by some gameplay from Battlefield 5, and then I'll try to showcase what a real life example sells for. Bear in mind that the price of weapons like this depends on several factors, including date of manufacture, condition, legislation at the time, and location. Overall, I think the main factor has to be the rarity, with some of these weapons fetching extravagant prices, but for those buying them, it's fully justified. I'm also not an expert at this sort of stuff, it's just something I have an interest in and thought you guys would have too, so enjoy. Some of the items on this list do have really hefty prices attached to them, but starting out, we're going for something a little more modest, the Lewis gun. Now you probably know the Lewis gun as a First World War era light machine gun. However, it is included in Battlefield 5 as well and was used in the Second World War quite extensively. The Lewis gun is the most recognized classic light machine gun in the world and actually served all the way up to the end of the Korean War. This is one of the cheaper options when it comes to weapons that are so well known and full of history. However, prices do fluctuate depending on the different legislation that appears. And interestingly, in the UK, some weapons are actually worthless because of the deactivation rules. So you've got to be very careful when getting hold of something like this. An original will probably set you back between five and 10,000 pounds. However, as I said, depends on the rarity of the weapon. As with everything in this list, some may be more than that, just depending on when they were built and maybe where they saw service. Next, we're moving on to the FG-42. The Fallschirmjäger Gewehr 42 is a selective fire automatic rifle produced in Nazi Germany during World War II. The weapon was developed specifically for use of the Fallschirmjäger Airborne Infantry in 1942 and was used in very limited numbers until the end of the war. It's a very famous weapon, and in fact most of its design was copied by the US Army when they developed the M60 machine gun. Arguably ahead of its time with one of the most advanced weapon designs in the Second World War, the FG-42 is incredibly expensive to get hold of these days. Lots like this don't really go on sale very often, but this one went for nearly $300,000. Yes, it's an outstanding model, with some very desirable rare accessories, including a sniper scope, original mount, grenade launcher, and spike bayonet. Maybe DICE could take a little look at this for the sort of attachments that people might want to have with their weapons in Battlefield 5, because clearly they did exist in the Second World War. However, I would say that a weapon like this is something very original and very rare, which is probably why the price is so high. If you don't have 300k knocking around, then maybe you might want to get yourself a replica, and whilst a replica obviously isn't the same thing, it's definitely better than nothing. And around $5,000 will get you this semi-automatic FG-42 with a scope, bayonet, and a case. Not a bad option for those enthusiasts. Moving on, we have the M1A1 carbine. Now, the M1 carbine is a lightweight, easy-to-use semi-automatic carbine that was a standard firearm for the US military during the Second World War, Korean War, and well into the Vietnam War. As with many weapons in World War II, they were of quite advanced design, things were evolving very quickly and they were used into the future past the Second World War. Now it was produced in several variants and was widely used by not only the US military, but also other forces around the world, and has been a very popular civilian firearm. Despite having a similar name and appearance, the M1 carbine is not a carbine version of the M1 Garand rifle. They are in fact different firearms and use different ammunition. It's actually quite a cheap weapon to get hold of, with loads of them knocking around. If you're looking for a proper World War II example, maybe two, three thousand dollars of what I'm seeing at the minute on auction sites. However, I'm sure you could pay much more than that for something that is a little rarer. An example in the background here is of a paratrooper carbine from the Second World War with a few battle scars on it. 
they're looking for around $2,000 for it, which isn't a bad price for something with such a rich history. Now for a weapon many of you will have been hoping to see on this list, it's the STG-44. The STG-44 is a German selective fire rifle developed during the Second World War and is also known as the MP-43 and MP-44. The STG-44 was the first successful assault rifle with features including a relatively short cartridge, controllable automatic fire, a more compact design than a battle rifle with a quicker rate of fire and intended for hitting targets within a few hundred meters. It was very effective, particularly on the Eastern Front. It came a bit too late to have a large effect on the war. However, its design was so advanced that it was used for many years since the Second World War in lots of different conflicts, and some argue that it was used as recently as in the Iraq War, I believe, which is pretty impressive. An original STG-44 will probably set you back between 50 and 100,000 pounds, which is a lot of money, but for a weapon with such a rich history, and one that is coming from the Second World War itself, and actually from the time when it was produced, and therefore fairly rare, you can arguably see why the money is worth paying. The Gewehr 15, also known as the Volkssturmgewehr, or the People's Assault Rifle, is the name of several rifle designs developed by Nazi Germany during the last months of World War II. They share the common characteristic of being greatly simplified as an attempt to cope with the severe lack of resources and industrial capacity in Germany during that final period of the war. This is a weapon that I love using in Battlefield 5 due to its simplicity and effectiveness with the larger magazine, and to be honest, it's just a good all-rounder on most maps. But if I wanted to get one in real life, I'd be looking at over £50,000. As you can see from the ones in the background on these American auction sites, over $50,000 is what is required to grab one, but some do have better history and are maybe in better condition, if that's what you're looking for. Next up, an interesting weapon, the M1907 SF. Now, the M1907 was in Battlefield 1, however, we had the SL variant. The SF variant was a fully automatic version that only had a few models made. It's very difficult to find an automatic variant, however, they did exist. I couldn't find what they went for, but I'd assume it would be upwards of £50,000 at least due to the rarity. Now, there are a few that are going on sale as an SL variant and they are much cheaper and I am just picking a number out of the air with 50 grand for an SL variant so if you do know how much one of those would go for a fully automatic variant of that M1907 I'd be very interested to know. Next up we have the Karabin 38M a self-repeating rifle that was a Polish prototype 7.92 semi-automatic rifle. Now, it was used by the Polish army during the invasion of Poland in 1939, but is very rare, with only around 150 examples being produced when Germany invaded in 1939. Only seven examples of these are known to have survived in various conditions. According to Forgotten Weapons, four are in the US, and then one each in Poland, Russia, and Germany. In April 2017, serial number 1048 was acquired at an auction by the Polish government for $69,000. But how much one of these would go for if they were for sale today, I really do not know. It could just be a bidding war between two enthusiasts with very deep pockets. Two weapons left that I want to take a look at. Something a little different, we've got a sidearm and then a gadget. The Mark VI revolver, also known in real life as the Webley revolver or the Webley top brake revolver, was in various marks a standing issue service pistol for the armed forces of the United Kingdom from 1887 until 1963. As you can tell, with a service life of that long, there's loads of these out there, and they're not actually too expensive to get hold of, but grabbing one from the Second World War that saw service would obviously be a little more difficult. And for that reason, I can't really say how much it would cost you, but most in the UK are deactivated and probably set you back a few thousand pounds. Finally, something a bit interesting, we have the PIAT. Now, PIAT stands for Projector Infantry Anti-Tank, and it was a British man-portable anti-tank weapon developed during the Second World War. The British Army needed a more effective infantry anti-tank weapon, and this was designed in 1942, coming into the war in 1943. Essentially, what would happen is a 1.1 kilogram shaped charge bomb was fired like a mortar using a cartridge in the tail of the projectile. 
It had an effective range of around 100 meters in a direct fire anti-tank roll, and it had several advantages over other infantry anti-tank weapons of the period, such as a greatly increased penetration power over the previous anti-tank rifles, and no blast back which might reveal the position of the user or accidentally injure friendly soldiers around the user. Now these are fairly cheap. If you're after one, you're probably going to be looking at around a thousand to two thousand pounds. If you're looking for a reproduction, well, it's probably around 400 to 500 pounds. Not very much for something with such a rich history, especially if you're getting the original. But again, if you're looking for a reproduction or replica, it's not a whole lot of money either. As I said, I'm not an expert with this sort of stuff, so I'll be interested to read the comments beneath a video such as this to see what some of the historical nerds and experts in the comments have to say. It's such an interesting topic, this one, considering that we play a game with so many weapons in it but really have no clue how much they would cost in real life or how rare some of them really are. The Karabin is probably my favourite one in this list considering how rare it is, but also the FG42 surprised me at being that expensive. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.